Hello guys. So I'm sure many of you saw my last video listing a lot of the issues of 2042. Now I want to look back at what made other Battlefield games great, why we enjoyed them and what 2042 could learn from previous titles. I thought I would start with potentially the best selling Battlefield ever, Battlefield 1. So here we go. Before BF1 came out, people suggested there was leaks saying the next Battlefield would be based on World War 1. I think I literally said if they made a World War 1 Battlefield game I would delete my Twitch channel. I just couldn't believe it was possible to make that time period a good setting for an FPS game. But I guess I couldn't have been more wrong. Battlefield 1 started incredibly strong with what is to this day the most watched FPS game trailer of all time. With 69 million views and before dislikes were removed a 99% like ratio. Nice. This trailer has amazing music choice great pacing and you immediately get a feel for what the game offers. All out warfare in authentic locations with explosive destruction with a relatively serious gritty tone. After seeing this and then the gameplay trailer a month later, I was feeling hopeful but still very concerned about how they were going to keep the gameplay fresh with a very limited selection of weapon types from that era. Just a month after that, myself and other creators were able to show footage of alpha gameplay that we'd captured. And then a month after that, we all had alpha access. They had really good cadence with marketing, showing gameplay and allowing people to play and showcase that gameplay. And when we got to play the game, the gameplay matched what the trailers had suggested. The first experience we all got to play on the alpha was St. Quentin Scar Conquest. Again, a perfect example of a battlefield map where infantry and vehicles can coexist in a gameplay equilibrium. The infantry fights mostly around the middle and the vehicles dominate the open edges of the map. Then a month or so later we had the open beta. Now this was Sinai Desert Conquest. Arguably you could make comparisons of Sinai Desert being a similar layout to a Battlefield 2042 map. Vehicles and snipers were much more dominant on this map and honestly I did enjoy it less than the alpha gameplay even primarily playing sniper. However there are people out there that want that style of gameplay. But the difference is, is that Battlefield 1 has plenty of map variety unlike 2042. In BF1 on release we had 9 maps total, 4 infantry oriented maps, 4 vehicle oriented maps and then a full infantry only experience with Argon Forest. In 2042 we have 7 maps in All Out Warfare and arguably almost none of them appeal to infantry players. Vehicles are dominant on every map and there's rarely a place for infantry to go to avoid them. In BF1, in every expansion from that point onward, there would be at least one infantry focused experience per update. In the French DLC we got Fort Vaux, in the Russian DLC we got Brusilov and Saritsyn, and then in the Turning Ties DLC we got Achibaba. And there was always options for vehicle players as well in every update. When the game finally came out on its initial planned release date in October, the game felt incredibly polished. As far as I can remember, the game ran well for everyone with no major complaints from its players. I can't think of a single prominent bug or glitch that plagued the game and media coverage reflected that, mostly praising the scale and graphical quality of the game on all platforms. 2042 on the other hand, almost all the media coverage for the game around released was mostly about how unfinished, buggy and laggy the game was. And that was the ongoing precedent for media coverage going forward. Back to BF1, on release we finally got to experience operations or breakthrough as it's now known and I would say I probably spent 90% of my game time in BF1 in operations. A great mix of vehicle and infantry gameplay with a more warlike feel than conquest. There was a narrative that you played along with giving you a reason to care about winning and losing rounds. In each grand operation sequence there would usually be at least one infantry focused map alongside vehicle focused maps. The variety in gameplay was always there. Now when I asked people on Twitter why they enjoyed Battlefield 1 versus the newer games, yeah I got just a few responses. Immersion and atmosphere were easily the top two choices. There was a perfect mix of audio, music, visuals and authenticity to the entire game. When pushing new objectives and operations, whistles, cheering, music changes, when you look out to the edge of every map there's a war raging all around you, the roads and fields are littered with the destruction of previous battles and the characters are talking of their horrific experiences between the rounds. 
the world is true to its origins. I don't think I need to make a comparison to 2042 here. Yeah, look at this atmosphere, you see? The screaming as you run forwards. People dying everywhere. Me dying. The realism. And on that topic, let's not forget that BF1 feels authentic, but not realistic. People obsess over the idea that games need to be more real to life, but it's important to note that BF1 has true to life visuals, uniforms, guns and vehicles, but the game is balanced for fun, not realism. And something else that was vital to that authenticity was the class system. These player models had unique identifiable features that outlined the class you're using and the faction you're fighting for. Purposely designed to be unique by silhouette alone, you can identify allies and enemies purely by the colours of their outfit and their shadow. Whilst BF5 allowed customizations for any class, making classes unidentifiable, 2042 threw out classes altogether with no discernible features to know who you're fighting against apart from their one specialist ability. 2042 very much avoids any feeling of a real battle situation without uniforms and team colours, further moving away from feeling like a real war. As for the guns, BF1 had 24 primary weapons and 18 secondaries across its four classes on release. 2042 has 22 weapons total, including secondaries. Now, I think they did this on purpose because they assumed people would use the customization system to make the guns their own. However, people prefer to have more options even if the guns perform the same, especially when you're dealing with iconic weapons. For instance, the M1903 and the Gewehr 98 perform almost identically, but people subjectively prefer the feel and sound of them. I feel like more choice is never really a bad thing in a player's mind unless there's so many weapons that you can't keep track of what's balanced or not. Now, there was some issues with BF1's guns. The gunplay was also simplified, with large spread on every gun, automatic and semi-auto, even when aiming down sight. In most cases, it was actually better to just hip fire than aim down sight, because the spread was almost exactly the same. And this is definitely an area that Battlefield 5 improved on. But weirdly, the sniper class with bolt actions is the only class that could be 100% accurate and they had a sweet spot one-shot mechanic to make them even more powerful. I always felt like sniping was so much better than any other class in the game. A lot of people have said that if Battlefield 1 had the gunplay and movement of BF5 with some of the cheesy elements removed, it would be the best Battlefield so far. Now whilst you can customise 2042 weapons more widely, most of the 2042 weapons had one best way of building them, and if you built it any other way, it was less effective. Whereas in Battlefield 1, you picked a certain variant of the gun that would give you benefits and trade-offs depending on what you wanted. Whilst I think a customization system is better, at least with BF1 your decisions were impactful, they made a big difference. In so many other games with attachments, you're basically just straight upgrading with no downsides. Now, Battlefield 1 was not a perfect game by any means, especially with regards to overall game balance and some very cheesy elements to the game. Some things I found annoying were behemoths, armoured units like sentries and horse players, and then certain selfish vehicles that ruin the gameplay. I truly believe that the artillery truck and the Muromets bomber are some of the most unbalanced vehicles in any game. But I also understand that some of the more cheesy elements of the game made it more accessible to a casual audience. Another thing that people have brought up was how slow the content was after the initial release of BF1. The first expansion released almost six months after launch, something we're now familiar with in 2042. Something that every Battlefield seems to fall for is that player retention always drops off after the first couple of months. And not just by a small amount, a majority of players are gone by then. I see a lot of people suggesting that 2042 had an extreme player fall off compared to other battlefields, but they all share the same fate in roughly the same time frame. Ultimately, the success and perceived greatness of Battlefield 1 boils down to this. An atmospheric, immersive, gritty, authentic war experience without focusing too much on realism, with refined audio and bespoke visuals whilst maintaining decent frame rate on all platforms. 
a clean launch with minimal bugs, with marketing that directly displays how the game plays, an arcadey, casual, infantry-focused, vehicle-assisted gameplay experience, with a variety of maps to fulfill all playstyles, innovation with interesting new mechanics and experiences like grand operations, and authentic real-world locations that people know about and a world that feels grounded in reality. Almost everyone believes that the immersion and atmosphere of BF1 is the biggest reason why this game was successful, whether the game was better or not compared to 2042 and BF5. It's more about how the game made people feel versus how it actually played. I personally feel like BF1 nailed the atmosphere more than any other Battlefield game, but the gameplay got stale quite quickly. The skill ceiling for the mechanics in the game were reached fast, and I didn't feel challenged soon after mastering the basics. I believe that the future of Battlefield is finding the perfect balance of atmosphere, authenticity and immersion in a modern combat game with more advanced gunplay and movement than BF1, appealing to all skill levels long term. If you agree with what I've said, then give it a like or a dislike and comment your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think about your Battlefield 1 experience and what would have made it a better game. What could 2042 learn from BF1? And how can we apply that knowledge to future Battlefield titles? I will be doing breakdowns of other previous Battlefield games, next up being Battlefield 5, so please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this little nostalgia trip, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.